Hi, I'm Keith Barton from Orfield's Eye Hospital in London. The breadth of the definition of MIGS is, at the minute, undetermined. Uh, there are many, many devices and procedures competing in the, the area. Not all are competing to be called MIGS because MIGS, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, is is uh, typically thought of as being the, the small stents that go into Schlem's canal, but there are also many procedures that cut or strip open Schlem's canal that may that are equally minimally invasive and might well be called MIGS as well. Uh, likewise, there's external filtration procedures which are more invasive, uh, have a greater IOP lowering efficacy, and some people call them MIGS, some call them subconjunctival MIGS, some call them external MIGS, some call them MIGS plus. I'm not sure in the end it really matters. Uh, MIGS is a hot term, it's, it's cool, it's sexy, but on the other hand, for some of the, not all the companies want to be associated under that umbrella. So uh, I, I think it's, it's open to discussion. It's, uh, well, it, Quite dramatically, really, you know, glaucoma surgery was a, was a graveyard of ophthalmology for the until about five, ten years ago when MIGS procedures started to appear. And it has produced a lot of options that we didn't have before. Glaucoma surgery is generally left as a last resort, it's fairly invasive, it's labour intensive, and, uh, and it doesn't always work. And MIGS procedures are minimally invasive. It's been a challenge for some glaucoma specialists because many of the MIGS procedures have much more modest efficacy. But on the other hand, they're uh, much less invasive. The follow-up's much less intense. And if, if you're a glaucoma patient or a glaucoma surgeon, the, the burden of post-operative care is very intense. Some patients are coming 10 times for follow-up after an operation. If you have a MIGS procedure, we only need one or two follow-ups. That, that's actually quite a significant reduction in, uh, in the burden as well. So it's, it, it's safer. There's, the MIGS procedures are safer. They're less, um, uh, the, the, the better quality of life for the patients, fewer medications afterwards, and, and can avoid more invasive procedures. Current challenges of MIGS differ slightly for the different types of MIGS. If you divide them roughly into bleb forming and non-bleb forming MIGS, the, 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 the challenges of adoption are one, uh, the economics of paying for them in a limited reimbursement situation. And surprisingly, I understand that reimbursement is even an issue in, in many places in the US where you have to uh, convince your individual provider to, to, to cover them. Obviously in the UK where there's a fixed tariff and the MIGS uh, at the moment for a, a, for a, a particular MIGS procedure it takes up a huge proportion of the tariffs. So the hospital's not much, left with much money after you pay for the device. So then you've got to really convince your hospital finance manager or the purchaser what what the be benefit of that device is. For the external MIGs, it's been an easier call because uh, they do shorten operating time a lot uh, compared with the trabeculectomy. And operating time is an expensive uh, uh, asset. And therefore, if you can do an operation a third of the time, you save the hospital a lot of money. The internal MIGs are a completely different proposition because you're talking about long-term quality of life benefits rather than shortened operating time. And that's much less tangible. And I think it behoves all of us, the surgeons and the companies, to produce hard data backing up this quality of life data so that we can then show it to our um, purchasers. Obviously, quality of life is very important to the NHS in the bigger picture, but it's something that's harder to sell to an individual commissioner there and then who's looking at his budget to year end. Mm -hmm.